Acute asthma exacerbations are common and potentially life-threatening emergencies that require prompt and effective management in the emergency department. Rapid assessment of airway, breathing, and circulation is essential, along with objective measurements such as peak expiratory flow rate or spirometry when possible. Continuous monitoring of oxygen saturation is critical, and supplemental oxygen should be administered to maintain saturations at or above 94% in patients with moderate to severe exacerbations. The cornerstone of treatment in acute asthma attacks is the administration of beta-2 agonists, with albuterol being the most commonly used agent. For nebulized albuterol, the recommended dosage is 2.5 mg every 20 minutes for three doses during the first hour. Alternatively, 5 mg doses can be used but do not provide additional clinical benefit over the 2.5 mg dose. When using a meter dose inhaler, MDI, patients should receive 2 to 4 puffs every 20 minutes for up to 3 doses initially. The onset of action for albuterol is rapid, typically within 5 minutes and its effects last for approximately 6 hours. Importantly, delivery via an MDI with a spacer is as effective as nebulization and is often preferred due to its portability and reduced risk of aerosolization. In patients with moderate to severe asthma exacerbations, the addition of an anticholinergic agent such as ipratropium bromide to albuterol therapy provides further bronchodilation. The recommended dosage for ipratropium is 0.5 mg nebulized every 20 minutes for three doses initially, followed by 0.5 mg every two to four hours as needed. Repeated dosing of ipratropium has been shown to be more effective than a single dose in severe cases. Typically, ipratropium is combined with albuterol during initial treatment to maximize bronchodilation. Systemic corticosteroids play a vital role in reducing airway inflammation and preventing relapse. Oral prednisone or an equivalent corticosteroid should be administered at a dose of 1 to 2 mg per kilogram per day, with a maximum dose of 60 to 80 mg daily. Early administration is crucial, and oral steroids are as effective as intravenous formulations in this setting. The onset of corticosteroid action usually occurs within 4 to 6 hours. Treatment is generally continued for 3 to 5 days to reduce the risk of relapse and hospital admission. Oxygen therapy should be provided to maintain oxygen saturation at or above 94%, particularly in moderate to severe exacerbations. Oxygen should be administered before and during nebulized bronchodilator treatments to prevent hypoxemia. For severe asthma exacerbations that are refractory to initial treatment with bronchodilators and corticosteroids, intravenous magnesium sulfate can be considered as an adjunct therapy. Magnesium sulfate works by inhibiting calcium influx into smooth muscle cells, leading to bronchodilation and reduced neuromuscular transmission. The recommended dosage is 40 mg per kilogram of body weight, up to a maximum of 2 grams infused over 20 minutes. Continuous monitoring of respiratory status, oxygenation, and response to therapy is essential throughout the treatment process. Patients should be reassessed frequently, and care should be escalated as needed. Discharge planning must include providing patients with a written asthma action plan, education on proper inhaler technique, and prescriptions for both reliever and controller medications. Arranging follow-up with primary care or pulmonology is important to reduce the risk of future exacerbations. In summary, effective management of acute asthma attacks in the emergency department involves rapid assessment and timely administration of inhaled beta-2 agonists at appropriate dosages, adjunctive use of anticholinergics like ipratropium bromide, systemic corticosteroids, and supplemental oxygen. Intravenous magnesium sulfate serves as a valuable adjunct in severe, refractory cases. Careful monitoring and comprehensive discharge planning are critical to improving patient outcomes and minimizing the risk of relapse.